believe. I remember a number of years ago, uh, way back in the late 70s, about 79, 80, somewhere along in there, I had bought some property out on the south side of Fort Worth. And uh, uh, it was just a small plot, small acres, about five acres to start with. And uh, the Lord impressed upon me to start believing Him for all the land that I could get my hands on in that very area. And so I began to do that. And right across the road from my property was 102 acres of land that was all uh, uh, pasture land. It was not uh, anything built on it. In fact, there had been cattle on that land when I first moved out there. And the Lord said, if you will remain patient, I will arrange for you to have all that land you want and pay whatever you want to pay for it. So I said, consider me patient right now. <laughs> Amen. Now, patience means to be constant, to be consistent, never changing regardless of the circumstances. That's what patience means. That's a Bible definition of patience. Constant, consistent, never changing regardless of the circumstances. Shortly after the Lord said that to me, there was an article that came out in our local newspaper, the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, and it showed a picture of the land that God had spoken to me about. And it had an article about a corporation that had just bought that land, and they had a diagram in there or a plan of what they were going to build on that land. So I held up the newspaper and I asked the Lord, did you read the paper this morning? Somebody bought my land. He said, no, I don't read that trash. Throw it away. You shouldn't either. And then he said this, whose report will you believe? <laughs> Amen. I said, I believe the report of the Lord. Now, throughout that day, there were thoughts that came up in my mind. Well, Maybe I didn't hear God after all. Uh, maybe that was just something I dreamed up. I had to cast those thoughts down. Because remember, he said, if you will remain patient, then I will arrange for you to have all that land you want and pay whatever you want to pay for it. So I remembered what he said. I said, I cast down every negative thought. I have cast down every thought that doesn't line up with what God said to me. And I cast it down, and I will I refuse to allow it to remain in my thinking. It wasn't long after that, there was another article in the newspaper that said that corporation went bankrupt, and they lost that land. Now, I didn't pray that on them, but uh, it doesn't pay to touch God's anointed. <laughs> Amen. And so, uh, so far it looks like, you know, that land is still available. But it wasn't long after that. Another corporation came in and bought that land. But this time, I didn't ask the Lord about it. I just said, Lord, I remember you told me if I remain patient that I will have all that land I want and pay whatever I want to pay for it. So consider me still patient. And eventually, that corporation went bankrupt and they lost the land. And then finally, a third corporation bought that land. I didn't say anything to the Lord about it because I knew what he was going to say. Didn't I tell you? Remain patient. And so I was determined to be constant, consistent, and never changing regardless of the circumstances. Amen. And a third corporation went bankrupt. Three corporations bought my land and they all went bankrupt. Finally, now I'm up in New York City. Jesse DePlantis and I were doing a meeting together in New York City. And uh, we left there and we went to Philadelphia to do another meeting. And while I'm in Philadelphia, I get a phone call from my general manager. And he said, we got a call today from the RTC, which is a government agency. And it said, Tell Mr. Savell 
that it appears that he's the only one buying land out there and not going bankrupt. <laughs> and they said, tell him, we don't want this land. We want money. Tell him to make us an offer because we want this land off the books. And then he also said, and tell Mr. Savell that there is a $1.3 million lien on this property. And so what he's going to offer us has to be far greater than the $1.3 million lien. And so I told him I'd call him back after I visited with the Lord about it. And so I said, Lord, you said that you would arrange for me to have all that land that I want and pay whatever I want to pay for it. I said, I've decided I want it all, all 102 acres. He said, okay, what do you want to pay for it? I said, now they said that I have to make an offer of over 1.3 million and then some, but I don't even want to do that. He said, then what do you want to do? I told you I would arrange for you to have all that land and pay whatever you want to pay for it. I said, Lord, all I want to do is pay $200,000 cash. I want the lien removed. I want a clear title. Not only that, I want the mineral rights. He said, then call him and tell him. So I called my attorney. And my attorney is a born-again, spirit-filled, Bible-believing, miracle-working attorney. Because I led him to the Lord many years ago. He's been with me 35 years. And I called Wayne. I said, told Wayne the story. I said, call the RTC and tell them, here's my offer. Tell them I want all 102 acres. I will give them $200,000 cash. I want the lien removed. And I want the mineral rights and a clear title. He said, I'll do it, Brother Jerry. And I'll call you right back after I hear back from them. And so several hours went by him. And then Wayne called me back. And he said, uh, when I called them, I started off with this. Do you believe in miracles? <laughs> they said, no, we work for the government. We don't see miracles. <laughs> and he said, well, I believe in miracles and my client believes in miracles. And here's his offer. He'll give you $200,000 cash. He wants the lien removed. He wants a clear title, and he wants the mineral rights. And he said there was total silence. He said, are you still there? They said, yes, but that's so ridiculous. We're not even going to, we're not even going to tell our superiors about his offer. He said, yes, you are. Your superiors told you to get the offer from him and report back to them. So you tell them, and then you report back to me. He said they called in a few hours, and their opening remarks were, we now believe in miracles. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now see, if I had a defeat mentality, yeah. I would not own that land. If I had not cast down vain imaginations, thoughts of failure and defeat, I wouldn't own that land. So we acquired 102 acres for $200,000. And I got not only the land, but a clear title, the lien removed, and the mineral rights. And the Lord was very specific in telling me to get the mineral rights. And so as time went by, some major gas companies started coming to our office and wanting to know if we were willing to lease that land so that they could drill horizontal gas wells. They said, there's gas on this property. You see, if I hadn't got the mineral rights, I wouldn't be entitled to the royalties that came from that gas. So they drilled two horizontal wells to start with. And my first royalty check was over $3 million. <laughs> Amen. Not bad for a $200,000 investment. <laughs> Amen. Not only that, but they decided they had to get the gas to the main plant 
And then they offered me another half a million dollars to drill, uh, to run pipe through that property. And then they decided there was gas uh, on the properties uh, north of my property, but it had houses on it. But they said there's gas under all those houses, but there's not enough land for each homeowner to drill a horizontal well. They said, if you will allow us to put the pad site on your property so we can drill on their land, we will pay you a royalty for that. My first royalty check was $450,000. Every time I turned around, I was making money on this land. Amen. Not only that, but not too long ago, a major developer, he develops mostly on the south side of Fort Worth. He came to me and he said, I'd like to buy a portion of that land. And he said, uh, uh, what would you ask for, for just a small part of that acreage? I said, well, how many acres do you want? He told me. And then I said, well, what would you offer on it? He said, well, I'll give you $1.2 million for that. I said, make it 1.5. He said, you got it. So every time I turn around, God's doing something else with that land. I'm building buildings and paying cash for them. I'm buying airplanes and paying cash for them. I'm uh, upgrading my equipment and paying cash for it. Hallelujah. All because I refuse to accept 